Hi. Welcome back. This is going to be a little different video. My Eastwood MIG was 75, 20 plus years old. Malfunction. Stop working. So what we do? Throw it away, right? Buy a new one. There's all kinds of welders. Actually, I got a couple coming my way possibly for free to demo here on the channel. But something about the trusty old steeds like giving up on her best friend. He's been with me, she, whatever, um, through many cars and really hasn't let me down. This is the first malfunction probably, honestly. Let me show you what broke and I probably did it from abuse or neglect or just... I don't know, I didn't know any better. So the good thing is, even though this thing is actually older than my kids, um, the parts are still available for this old thing. Contacted Eastwood, 17 bucks, killed me for $15 for shipping for this little piece. But nonetheless, $30, pretty confident I'm going to be able to dock this thing up. So that's what we're going to do this go around. How to fix your Eastwood MIG 175. Here's my dusty old fool. Been full of water a few times, drug around three different garages and still kicking until just recently. What's actually going on, let me show you here inside the old uh, Make It Happener. Uh, get this stuff out of the way. Unplugged it already from the uh, wall current. Probably a good idea because this probably lights you up pretty good. But what's happening is, check this out. See how loose this is? Well, the problem becomes is it's a plastic housing. You'll see a crack right here. Well, the problem with that is that's where the gas feeds into this for shielding. So if I was using this as a flux core weld on my buddy Louie, Keep on keeping on, my friends, but I don't. I can't weld with that stuff. I'm not the master like somebody claims to be. I think Louie's more of a master than that Bondo Billy guy, but uh, that's a different story for a different day. But anyway, that plastic housing is busted. That's what's broken. That's where our drive is for our wire feed and everything. Um, so this housing is one piece. It's got to have a hose on the backside. So I'm not sure how we're going to take this thing apart, except for we're just going to take it apart. I see a couple of screws. I'm clever enough. I think I can turn those and see how this goes. But that's what we're going to get into today. Changing out that piece there. Because like I said, I done got a new one. And actually, you'll see how this thing works. This is what I like to check out the part. See how it works. This here's a little hose bar. That's what I said. It's where it feeds the gas into the lead. There's little O-rings to seal. But since it's split wide open, well, it makes for messy welds. But this is a pretty good deal. We're talking, like I said, 17 bucks for this part here. So looks like three screws attached to motor. Somehow the hose is attached to the back side of this. Um, but other than that, it doesn't look too complicated to change out. So let's get into it. All right, well, I've already undone the wire. That's that's pretty self-explanatory, I feel. Um, here's our one lead. That's pretty cool, no socket required. Put that back on there for safekeeping. And I said the challenging part, I think, is gonna be is how do I get the gas hose off the back? I have a feeling we're going to end up having to take this whole welder apart, but I don't know. Um, but even then, like I said, this thing's been trusty old steed. Now, a new welder, I understand they're pretty smart now. They've got some cool stuff happening inside of them. Might make me even more of an expert welder, but I just can't give up on this thing. Well, these are just turning, so I have a weird feeling. Well, now that one come out. That one just started spinning like it had a nut on the back side of it or something silly. Let's see. Yeah, there's no screws on the bottom of it, so it's just one, two. Um, and then we'll have to disconnect. It looks like this is the drive motor hole, so I'll take these three screws out for the drive motor here, too. No, it looks like it wants to come out with it. But I think I'll just do this. Shot. I'll leave those that motor in place. I have means of manipulating the location by grabbing the motor shaft there that I can move it around so it's not like it's going to fall down inside the welder and go that was a bad idea okay now this top one does not want to let go it's just spinning I'm going to put some tension on it here You little devil. There we go. I think she's turning now. Just didn't want to go. That's the problem. Now, it appears the hose is just a bar, not even a clamp on it. Look at that. Yeah. Ooh, that's that plastic tube stuff. Anyway, there's the old part. Now I gotta find a way to. I'm gonna get my little propane torch. Be right back. I'm gonna warm this up just a little bit. See if I can get that barb to come out of it. Because once it cools, hopefully it'll shrink back on. 
Now we're not gonna get too carried away. We just need to warm it up a little bit. Hot water would probably do the trick, but that means I have to walk inside. Do it this way, get the vice grips on. Yeah, all right, that'll work. I can heat that up now. Wasn't thinking that far ahead. That's gonna get a little warm, probably. You won't be able to hold on to it. Yeah. Okay, now we'll just a skosh walk. back on hopefully oh yeah it's tight that snapped right into place and that operates at a pretty low pressure so i think we're going to be okay now let's put the, this is our drive motor again it's got some slack to it just three little screws And uh, three or third or three or three ones down here. Okay. One. Two. Ooh, yeah, I guess I might have goofed. That's supposed to go on afterwards, but we'll see how this goes. Now we gotta hook the bottom. Oh man, that's just beautiful. I'll put these guys back in. I do like these self tapping the screws. <laughs> All right, well. Pick up our lead. Put our drive wheel back on. We got different sizes for a different size wire, but put it back the way that it was because that'd be working just fine. So now this is. Huh, well, that wasn't too bad. Now I should be able to reinstall this. My o ring's still pretty, pretty soft and pliable. So what you do is you loosen up this, you slide this into play. Oh, that's going to seal up again just nice. Now my lead, well, it's not loose anymore, but that was the thing probably that condemned my welder. I was guilty for dragging my welder around by this. So I guess 20 some years, that plastic finally said it had enough. But you know what? I really can't complain. That was a five minute fix. I probably got that much time into this video. I probably spent more time talking than actually fixing it. So let's feed this thing through here and give her a test burn, but I think we are up and running again so I can finish Project Lamborghini. I have seen these newer welders have a little switch you can push and it automatically runs the motor and feeds the wires. You don't have to just pull the trigger or waste gas. It actually just kind of pushes it right through. So um, I like doing it this way, feeding the, through the liner because it, it should push through relatively easy. If you push this through and you get a really tight spot and it's in the same spot, there's a chance your liner's got an issue and you probably gotta look into replacement. So this is something that I just like to do. And it goes pretty quick. Got you all pushed back through. Now we can plug it back in. All right, now, when I pull the trigger, turn the gas on, of course, instead of all the gas blowing out here, it should come out here. And, oh, <laughs> that's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> so there you have it, changing out this piece here, less than probably five minutes of actual work, probably spent more time talking, but see the crack? That's how it just wasn't gonna seal, it just wasn't gonna work, so. I'm back up in operational. I got this done fixed quicker than I actually got my free welder shipped to me. 
Well, there maybe I'll still do a little demo on it if they actually come in and I'll show you if they're good, bad, or different because they are new. They got them digital screens and smart stuff going on instead of knobs. So um, I might love it. I might hate it. But either way, I still have my trusty Eastwood MIG 175 operational again, ready to get back to work and help me out in getting these fibers back on the road. So anyway, I got this thing operational. I got a whole bunch of welding to do and hope to see you all then.